Now, if anyone was to mention DJI to you, the immediate thing you're going to think about is DJI drones, and that's because they are world leaders in drone technology. And pretty much every YouTuber I know has got a DJI drone, including my good self. This is a Maverick 3. It can hover like this for over 45 minutes, and that is all due to the amazing battery technology that goes into these drones. After all, this drone weighs almost one kilo, so the battery in this drone has to be 100% reliable and that is why DJI put so much research and development into their battery technology so it comes as no surprise that DJI have now brought out their very own battery pack for all those people out there that want to fly their drones off grid. So when DJI got in touch with me and asked me to do a video review of their new power pack the DJI 1000 how could I possibly say no? So let's jump in the van and take a real close look at what DJI have pulled out of the bag. So here we are, this is the brand spanking new DJI Power 1000 Portable Power Pack. Now before we take it out of the bag, please allow me to introduce myself. My name is Mel and my YouTube channel, Big Van Small World, is primarily about camper vans and off-grid living. And over the years I've done quite a few review videos of power packs similar to this. So you could say I've had a little bit of experience in the field of portable power stations. So I am genuinely excited to see what DJI have to offer. So without further ado, let's take it out of the bag, take a good close look at it. Actually, we don't need to take it out of the bag because this bag is really cleverly designed. You can actually leave it in the bag and use it whilst it's still in the bag. So this bag actually protects the power station as well. But anyway, we're not going to leave it in the bag. We want to take it out and have a real good look. I do like the zips. Anyway, let's take this out. Excuse my back. <laughs> First impressions, it definitely looks like a quality power pack. Right, now the first thing that strikes me as impressive is the, purely the size of this thing. It has got a 2200 watt pure sine wave inverter built into this. And for the size of it, it is ridiculously small. Let me show you what I mean by comparing it with one of the other power packs I have knocking around. So this is a similar size. This is the Jackery Explorer 1000. And as you can see, it is a very similar size. Although the DJI is slightly longer. And the Jackery is slightly uh, thicker or fatter that way. But nevertheless, very similar in size. Now this has 2,200 watt pure sine wave inverter built into it, whereas the Jackery Explorer has only got a 1,000 watt pure sine wave inverter built into it. Although, I've got to say, it is a really good power pack. I just wanted to point out the similar size of these two power packs. Now, although, as you can see, they are quite similar in size, they are very different. And one of the big differences I've noticed straight away is that, the, that most power, well, not most, all the power stations that I've re reviewed in the past have all got a 12 volt 10 amp outlet, like similar to a cigarette light socket you'd find on the dashboard of your car. Whereas the DJI hasn't got that at all. Also, when it comes to charging the DJI, and the Jackery, the Jackery you actually need a power inverter and this plugs into a DC supply at the top. So you do need to lug one of these power bricks around and that is quite common for these type of power packs. Whereas the DJI power pack, you just have a regular lead and this, underneath this dust cap, plugs into there and then in turn this plugs into your wall socket. No power brick to carry around. I really like that because they are a serious pain. And also it means the DJI charges a lot quicker. And again, you've got less to carry around. Something else that I noticed straight away and I actually contacted DJI about this is the capabilities of charging via solar. There appears to be no solar input 
directly into this unit. Unlike the Jackery, you plug the solar panels directly into here. The DJI, you have to actually buy a separate MPPT charge controller, which plugs into these auxiliary sockets here. And this is where we come to the major difference between the DJI and all the other power packs I've ever done review videos on. None of them have these power sockets. And I think DJI have really come up with something quite special here because you can buy a multitude of accessories that plug into this. Like for instance, 12 volt outlet, cigarette lighter types plug, that you can plug into your car to charge it whilst you're driving and also most importantly an adapter so that you can charge your drones so let's get rid of the jackery for now we'll come back to that later we'll do some more comparisons later on and we'll talk more about the accessories that can plug into the dji power 1000 now starting with what we were talking about earlier using your car's alternator to charge your power pack you can actually buy a DJI 12 volt charging pack which plugs into here so you can charge this whilst you're driving in your car and again to charge the power pack you will need a separate MPPT charge controller so you can plug solar panels into this now at first I did think why would they do that why wouldn't they build this into the power pack itself and the answer is quite simple not everybody is going to want to use solar panels to charge their power pack a majority of people will use their 240 volt supply at home and then take this away for the weekend and by doing this separate it makes the dji power 1000 a lot cheaper because you have to buy this separately so i guess the logic is why include something built into the power pack that nobody is ever going to use like the 12 volt socket for instance in the jackery unless you're going to be running a fridge or something like that then you're probably never going to use that 12 volt socket hence it's not built into the power pack you need to buy one separately keeping the price of this really competitive now of course the main purpose for this power pack is to charge your drones and it can charge drones ridiculously fast and again that is done by using a separate lead and these are available for a wide range of DJI drones. Again, this just plugs into here. And then your drone battery plugs into the cradle and this will charge your drone really fast. So let's put this to the test right now. Let's see how long it takes to charge my drone battery. I shall go and fly it around for a bit, make sure the battery is completely depleted, then I'll come back and we'll put this to the test. Okay, so here we are back in the van and the drone battery is completely depleted. So let's see how fast the uh, DJI Power 1000 can actually charge this drone battery. First, we need to remove the battery, plug that in, switch it on. And we'll put a timer on now to see how long it actually takes. So we're going to start our timer. The time, the clock is ticking. Let's see how long it takes to actually charge this battery. We are now at 23, or nearly 24 minutes. There we go, 24 minutes, we're at 82% charged. Well, it's now been 35 minutes and we're at 98%. Look at this, it's gone down to 17 watts. So it's now trickle charging our drone battery, thus ensuring there's no damage to the battery Oh, look at that, it's just clicked 100%. Oh, let's stop that timer. So we've reached 100% just as I was filming and it's taken 35 minutes. That is pretty impressive. Look at that, absolutely fantastic. Well, now my drone's all nicely charged up. Let's see what happens when we try and charge this. We're going to use a solar panel first. And the solar panel we're going to use is this Zygnus. 120 solar panel you can see it's a folding panel it folds up really nice i mean that is really light as well some of these solar panels i've been tried before are quite heavy so let's set this up outside and see what happens okay so let's plug this in look at that Ooh. Right. yeah that's a very long lead 
plug it in. See what happens. Well, I think I'm going to have to put the power pack inside the van, otherwise you're never going to be able to see the screen. Now this is a 120 watt solar panel we have here. You can see there we're getting 96 watts going in. And up here it says 53.17 volts. It's pretty high voltage for a solar panel, I've got to say. We're at 43% state of charge, that's what's left in the battery. And according to this, at this rate of charge, it will only take six hours. That's pretty good going. Now remember, you can plug three solar panels into this. So in theory, you could plug three of those 120 watt solar panels into here, giving you 360 watts of power. That is quite impressive, I've got to say. I do like that. Now something else that's just occurred to me is this switch here. So when you plug it into the mains, you can choose between 1200 watts or 600 watts of charging. I guess this is handy for if you're, if you're staying on a campsite where the power supply to your electric hookup is sometimes limited. You can actually turn it down. Never have I seen this before on any of the power packs I've done reviews on in the past. So there you have it, quite a unique idea to have a separate MPPT charge controller rather than having one built into the battery bank itself. I don't know of any other power pack that has this unique system. Part of me kind of thinks it's a good idea because it does keep the cost down and I do know quite a few people that use these power banks without using solar panels, they just simply charge them indoors before they go away for the weekend. Me personally, I always use solar panels to charge all of my battery banks. Please do leave a comment down below what your thoughts are. Do you think having a separate MPPT charge controller is a good idea or a bad idea? Do please let me know. Let me know what you think. Leave a comment down below. I really do appreciate your feedback. Now DJI do claim that this is ultra quiet to charge when you do actually plug it into the mains. So let's go into the workshop and plug this into the mains and see how quiet it really is. Well, welcome to the workshop canteen. So I've got the DJI Power 1000 here. Hopefully people in the workshop don't make too much noise during this test. But I apologise if they do. Let's plug this in and see what happens. Will it, or won't it, make a noise? So we're drawing 900 watts or 920 watts. Oh, it is making a noise. I can can just about hear the fan running. Literally, I have to put my ear up to it to hear it. Don't think my decibel meter is going to make much difference. Let's put it up to here, up to the actual fan. It's fluctuating between 55. I think 55 is about the highest it goes. There we go. Hardly any noise at all. It really is ultra quiet. Let me hold my microphone up to the fan so you can actually hear the noise it's making. It's quieter than my fridge. Now let's do a little bit of a comparison. It's time to bring out the Bluetti. So this is a Bluetti AC70. Let's see how much noise this makes. There we go. It's not that noisy either, to be fair. It's drawing 600, 700 watts, similar amount of power. So the DJI is pulling 900 watts and it's been doing this for quite a while and it has, has got a little temperature, um, like a little thermometer flashing underneath there. So if I stop talking, this should settle down. around about 55 decibels. Now the Bluetti. You can hear it straight away. And it pulls, it's pulling the same, yeah, that's pulling 942 watts. This is now pulling 700. 80 decibels, 80 decibels at the most. So there you are definitely what you would consider ultra quiet so quiet in fact i would say it's pretty well silent 
So there you go, once again, make your own mind up. Do you think this is important? The sound, the noise they make? Please do leave a comment down below in the comment section of this video if you think um, having a noisy fan is an issue or not an issue. It certainly isn't an issue with the DJI. <laughs> right, so with all that out of the way, let's jump back in the van and we'll go through some of the finer specifications of the DJI Power 1000. So far, I'm really impressed. Well, welcome back to Inside the Van. Now let's take a close look at some of the key features of the DJI Power 1000. Now the battery capacity of this power station is 1024 watt hours. It's a LiPo 4 battery, so it's super safe. And that battery is capable of being charged in little under 70 minutes. And as we just witnessed, it is super silent. And as you can see now, it is at 98% and I only had it plugged in for about 20 minutes. So I do believe those statistics are pretty accurate. Now for all you content creators out there, the other key feature of this is the fact that it can fast charge drones via its SDC power outputs. And it's also got two USB-C ports that are capable of delivering 140 watts. Perfect for charging your cameras. So if you're a content creator and you suffer from power anxiety, this could be the perfect solution, especially if you spend a lot of time off grid or in very remote locations. But it's not only suitable for content creators, it's also a great accessory for people that like to go camping, road tripping, or if you just want to spend a lazy day on the beach and you want a bit of power to power some of your luxury items, maybe a fridge or something or a cool box. And if you take a solar panel with you, then you've got endless power all day long. And with that 2200 watt pure sine wave inverter, it will pretty much take care of all your power needs. So there you have it, the DJI Power 1000. Perfect for all those off-road adventures. Now if you do want to know more about the DJI Power Pack, I will leave a link in the description of this video purely for your convenience. I do hope you enjoyed watching this video, you found it mildly entertaining, slightly informative. If you did then please do give it a thumbs up. I'll see you very soon. Thanks for watching. Ta-da for now.